I purchased the C200 back in 2018 and I've shot a variety of projects since then, from documentary projects to social media videos to spec projects to YouTube videos and everything in between. It's been my go-to workhorse because it does everything I need it to do, from two XLR ports to internal NDs to a great image and autofocus, the list really goes on and on. It makes a great camera for those who need something for a full-blown production all the way down to a one-man band type of shoot. There's a reason why I've shot all my projects on this one camera and don't plan on upgrading anytime soon. Let me explain. Before we jump into this video, I just want to share quickly who I am and what this channel is about. My name is Matt Atia, and the whole point of this channel is to document my journey and progression as a DP and filmmaker. I work in the lighting department on commercial film sets and currently transitioning my career into cinematography, so if this sounds like something that you would enjoy, then consider subscribing. When I purchased this camera five years ago, I was super excited because I was thinking about all the amazing projects I was going to shoot with it because now I finally own a camera that allows me to do that. And I did do that stuff with it. I've created some projects that I'm really proud of over the years and the C200 is a great stepping stone when it came to making all of that happen. I've thought about upgrading my camera multiple times. With so many new and exciting cameras entering the market with things like smaller form factors, higher sensitivity ISOs, better image quality, dynamic range, the list goes on. I almost feel not a part of the conversation and circle because I don't own one of the cameras many of today's creators are shooting on. The C200 has many things I don't like about it. It's Shit, big C200. and clunky, first ACs don't really know how to work with it, the menu system kind of sucks, it's not really good in low light, you're limited to 8-bit or 12-bit, you can't really adapt PL lenses, and it feels like a prosumer camera because it is one. There was a time where I was looking at purchasing a Komodo and I started to get excited because I was thinking about all the cool projects I could shoot with it. Kind of the same same mindset I had when purchasing my C200. Am I really going to do all those things just because I own a new camera? I mean, the excitement of owning my C200 died out maybe after a year. That's when I had a big mindset shift in my career. I decided instead of investing thousands of dollars in a new camera system, why don't I put that money into creating a project that I'm proud of and have my portfolio speak for itself? So I dropped that dream of buying the latest and greatest camera gear and instead embarked on creating spec projects for my portfolio and channeling that excitement into my work. If you've subscribed to this channel, you've most likely seen the Depop spec I created and I had some people ask me how much it costs to create that and the answer is a little bit over $8,000. You might be thinking to yourself, $8,000 is a ridiculous amount to put into a project and I definitely could have bought a new camera system with it. The reason I spent $8,000 is because I wanted all the things besides the latest and greatest camera. Things like production design, wardrobe, hair, makeup, crew, and talent. I know this video took a bit of a turn and I didn't want it to turn into a gear design matter video, but bear with me because I think you'll take something away from this. My past two projects were shot on the C200 and it's given me results that I'm proud of. One of them is in post-production during the time of filming this, but I can confidently say I've created the best work I've ever shot on the C200. The C200 produces a stunning image if you know how to expose it properly, have some decent lighting, know the basics of color grading, and have some sort of production design on your projects. I want to put money solely into my projects and creating the best possible work I can, which is why I don't plan on upgrading. I notice when I spend money on things like production design, my work improves dramatically. Having production design on each project will far outshine your work compared to other people that have shot on a better camera than you with little to no production design. It's tempting to want a new camera. It's something I want as much as you do, but there's just too many things that go into creating good work besides owning a new tool. When I allocate budget for things like getting a package truck and a small lighting team, my work also improves that much more. When I pay talent that knows what they're doing and can give me a good performance, that also adds a ton of production value. I think all these little things can get overlooked when we get into the mindset of, I want a new camera. I'd much rather shoot on a worse camera and have all the things that add production value, opposed to shooting on an airy and shooting in a white walled room. I think so often we can get into the mindset of, if only I owned this piece of kit, I'd be able to shoot this project. Don't get me wrong, I've definitely outgrown this camera and I'm pretty over it if I'm being totally honest with you, but I just can't justify spending thousands of dollars on a new camera system when I'm not happy with where my portfolio is at just yet. I've definitely put all my eggs in one basket by solely investing into projects because I've 
already shot two this year and they weren't cheap. I'm not even 100% sure that solely investing into my portfolio is the right answer, but I think by building the reputation of delivering high quality work, it'll hopefully open some doors for some future projects and collaborators. If you enjoyed this video and want to see some more cinematography based content, then subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.